This is All India Radio. We now bring you a special news program on COVID-19. Good evening. I am Anuja Kumar and with me is Renuka Ares. The headlines. Government says focus is on test, cure and to ensure low mortality due to COVID-19. No new case of COVID-19 reported in last 14 days in 78 districts. Recovery rate of patients improves to 19.89%. 10.6 lakh employees benefited through Employees Provident Fund contribution transferred under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. Record 2.8 lakh metric tons of food grains moved by Food Corporation of India in a single day to different parts of the country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address gram panchayats across the country via video conference on occasion of National Panchayati Raj Day tomorrow. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh inaugurates Mobile Virology Research and Diagnostics Laboratory enhancing COVID-19 sample testing. Jammu and Kashmir government announces health care package for pregnant women in the wake of coronavirus outbreak. The government today said the growth of COVID-19 has been more or less linear, not exponential during the last one month. It said the strategies adopted by the center have helped contain virus to a particular level. This was stated by the chairman of the Empowered Group while briefing reporters in New Delhi. He said the lockdown has helped to cut corona transmission, minimize the spread and increase the doubling rate of COVID-19. He said in the last one month, the government has expanded the testing base and over 5 lakh tests have been done. He however said this is not enough and there is a need to ramp up testing in the country. The chairman also said the number of dedicated hospitals have increased 3.5 times since last month and a number of isolation beds increased by 3.6 times. He added that the government is working on the principle of test, cure and ensure that mortality is low in the country. We have been able to consistently ramp up our testing. We have been able to utilize this time gainfully for preparing ourselves for the future if the virus spreads further, whatever is required to be done, we will need to do. So there has been a lot of action during these 30 days. Meanwhile, the recovery rate of COVID-19 patients in the country has improved to 19.89%. A total of 1,229 Fresh COVID-19 cases have been reported in the country in the last 24 hours, taking the total number to 21,700. As many as 4,325 patients have recovered and have been discharged from the hospitals, while 686 patients have died. Health Ministry spokesperson said there are 78 districts in the country where no new cases of COVID-19 have been reported in the last 14 days. He also said there are 12 districts which have not reported any fresh case in the last 28 days. Four jile the jahan par koi case nahi aaye the. Ab vah sankhya badkar 12 ho chuki hai. Eight naye jile add hue hain. Iske saath hi desh mein 78 aise districts hain jahan par pichle 14 dinon se koi case nahi aaye hain. Hame har sambhav milkar yehi koshish karni hai ki aise jilo ki sankhya nirantar badhti rahe. The Home Ministry spokesperson informed about the exemptions announced by the government during the lockdown. She said the centre has clarified to states that in-house caregivers of senior citizens, prepaid mobile recharge utilities and food processing units in urban areas are exempted from the lockdown restrictions. She said road construction, work at brick kilns and cement factories are a few activities gathering pace in the country. She also said the states are facilitating commercial activity in areas which are not hot spots as per the guidelines. लॉकडाउन के एनफोर्समेंट देश में कुछ घटनाओं को छोड़ अधिकांश स्थानों पर संतोषजनक चल रहा है आर्थिक गतिविधियों में खासकर ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों में प्रगति हो रही है 22 अप्रैल तक मनरेगा के तहत डेढ़ करोड़ से अधिक श्रम दिवस अर्जित हुए हैं जो क्षेत्र हॉटस्पॉट या कंटेनमेंट जोन में नहीं है वहां गृह मंत्रालय के निर्देशानुसार राज्य सरकारें औद्योगिक इकाइयों को सुव्यवस्थित तरीके से शुरू करवाने में लगी हुई हैं। इंडियन काउंसिल ऑफ मेडिकल रिसर्च स्पोक्स पर्सन इन्फॉर्म्ड दैट 325 लैब्स आर वर्किंग इन द कंट्री टू टेस्ट कोविड 19 
Speaking on the occasion, Director Ames, New Delhi, said, COVID-19 patients are facing a lot of challenges and stigma, which is not justified. He said the recovered patients are symbols of victory. He also said there is a need to reach out to those patients who are afraid to come out because of stigma posing danger to their lives. The AIMS director said, due to the stigma people have attached to COVID-19, patients are not coming forward and they are coming very late when they have severe breathlessness issues. Senior BGP leader and Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Javlekar has hit back at Congress President Sonia Gandhi for accusing the BJP of spreading the communal prejudice and hatred in the country. Talking to reporters in New Delhi today, Mr. Javrekar condemned the remarks of Ms. Gandhi and alleged that it is the Congress which is dividing the society. Congress is preparing for the society in the society. And this society is giving us a lot of pain. That's why we do this at this time. The country is going to the same direction. The Mahamari is fighting from the Mahamari. The Congress is talking about the party of the party of the party of the party of the party. Earlier in the day, while addressing a meeting of the Congress Working Committee, Ms. Gandhi had alleged that BJP is damaging the social harmony which should worry every Indian. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has suggested that hospitals in and around COVID-19 containment zones must treat all patients as suspect COVID-19 cases until proven otherwise and exercise standard care. Ministry has issued the guidelines after detection of suspected COVID-19 case in a non-COVID health facility. More from our correspondent. Ministry said that a COVID-19 case with mild and asymptomatic may go undetected and inadvertently transmit the infection to other patients and healthcare workers, putting these individuals at risk and compromise the functionality of the healthcare facility. The guideline stated that whenever a known COVID patient or any healthcare worker is suspected to have COVID-like symptoms or test positive for coronavirus, the Hospital Infection Control Committee will come into action, investigate the matter and suggest further course of action. As per the guidelines, all close contact of healthcare worker and supportive staff of the confirmed cases should be put on hydroxychloroquine for a period of seven weeks. It has also been suggested that once a suspect or confirmed case is detected in a healthcare facility, standard procedure of rapid isolation, contact listing and tracking disinfection will follow while there will be no need to shut down the whole facility. Bhupen Singh, AIR News, Delhi. The center has dismissed media reports that legal action will be taken by the states, including imprisonment of CEO and factory getting sealed in case a COVID-19 patient is found in the factory. In a letter to the state chief secretaries, Union Home Secretary Ajay Bhalla said, apprehensions were raised by some companies and media based on wrong interpretation of lockdown guidelines. He said no lockdown clause mandates legal action, including imprisonment of CEO, in case a COVID-19 positive employee is found in the factory. Mr. Bhalla also said there is no clause in the lockdown guidelines about sealing of factory in case of an employee testing positive for COVID-19. Around 162 crore rupees have been transferred to over 68,000 establishments as employees' provident fund contribution, benefiting 10.6 lakh employees under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. A total of 2.17 crore building and construction workers have received financial support amounting to 3,497 crore rupees. The package was announced by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on the 26th of March to protect the poor from the impact of the lockdown due to COVID-19. As part of the package, the government announced free food grains and cash payments to women and poor senior citizens and farmers. More than 33 crore poor people have been directly given financial assistance of 31,235 crore rupees under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. Under the scheme, free ration of food grains have been distributed to 39.27 crore beneficiaries. In all, 2.66 crore free Ujwala cylinders have been delivered under Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana. Over 10,000 crore rupees has been disbursed to 20.05 crore women Jandhan account holders. A total of 1,405 crore rupees have been disbursed to about 2.82 crore old age persons, widows and disabled persons. Under first installment of PM Kisan, an amount of 16,146 crore rupees have been transferred to 8 crore farmers. Amid the lockdown, many social 
by Gyapadan, many schools are imparting online lessons to the students to avoid loss of time. A student from Manipur expressed her happiness over this. My name is Marina and I am a class 10 student of Arkesana Tombi Devi Vidyalaya Pangai. During this lockdown period, our school is helping in our study through e-learning process. Though I am not able to attend school due to this lockdown, I can learn my lessons online and consults with concert teachers whatever any problem regarding my study. Woman Sarpanch from Kutch district of Gujarat appreciated the generous step taken by the government in distributing free ration and free LPG cylinders to Ujwala beneficiaries. अन्न ब्रह्म योजना उसके अंतर्गत सभी परिवारों को मुफ्त में अनाज वितरण किया जा रहा है का अमल हमारे गांव में भी बहुत अच्छी तरह किया जा रहा है आयोजनबद्ध कोई भीड़भाड़ नहीं होती इस तरह से ये सब वितरण किया जा रहा है और इससे सभी वर्गों को बहुत अच्छा लाभ हो रहा है सभी योजनाओं से प्रजा को बहुत राहत हो रही है और सपोर्ट हो रहा है the Food Corporation of India set a new benchmark by moving 102 train loads carrying about 2.8 lakh metric tons food grains yesterday. Maximum movement was from Punjab, which loaded 46 train loads, followed by Telangana with 18. Wheat and raw rice was moved from Punjab and Haryana to various parts of the country. Boiled rice was moved from Telangana to Kerala, Tamil Nadu and West Bengal. With this movement, the total food grain stocks moved by FCI during the lockdown period crossed 5 million metric tons at a daily average of 1.65 lakh metric tons. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address village panchayats across the country tomorrow to mark the National Panchayati Raj Day. Mr. Modi will also interact with various participants through video conferencing in view of lockdown. A report. The Prime Minister will launch a unified e-Gram Swaraj portal and mobile application on the occasion. The unified portal is a new initiative of Panchayati Raj Ministry which will provide the Gram Panchayats with a single interface to prepare and implement their development plans. Mr. Modi will also launch the Swamit scheme which provides for an integrated property validation solution for rural India. Every year on this occasion, Panchayati Raj Ministry has been awarding the best performing Panchayats, states and union territories across the country for their good works in improving delivery of services and public goods. This year, three such awards have been finalized. Divakar, AI News, Delhi. Through the Constitution, 73rd Amendment Act, 1992, the Panchayati Raj had come into force on 24th April 1993, marking a defining moment in the history of decentralization of power. In West Bengal, work has begun for constructing houses in rural areas after the government approved relaxation in the field during lockdown. A senior officer of the state government said that construction of more than 9,53,000 houses have been fixed during the current financial year. A report from our Kolkata correspondent. The work for the scheme, named as Amarbari, has begun with local laborers. After long days lockdown, this has brought happiness among laborers for getting jobs through panchayats under the scheme. The state government will provide 1,20,000 rupees for each house, provided beneficiaries possess a piece of land. The state government constructed over 9,80,000 such houses in last financial year. Origit Chakravarti, AIR News, Kolkata. Human Resource Development Minister Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank today released an alternative academic calendar for the upper primary stage, classes 6 to 8 in New Delhi. The alternative academic calendars at primary and upper primary stage have been developed by the NCERT under the guidance of the MHRD to engage students meaningfully during their stay at home due to COVID-19. Our correspondent reports that this calendar will empower the students, teachers and parents to find out positive ways to deal with COVID-19 using online teaching learning resources. The calendar contains week-wise plan consisting of interesting and challenging activities with reference to theme and chapter taken from the textbook. Most importantly, it maps the themes with the learning outcomes. The purpose of mapping is to facilitate teachers and parents to assess the progress in the learning of children and also to go beyond textbooks. It also covers experiential learning activities such as arts, education, physical exercise and yoga. This calendar contains class-wise and subject-wise activities in tabular forms. It includes activities related to four languages, Hindi, English, Urdu and Sanskrit. This calendar also gives a space to the strategies of reducing stress and anxiety among teachers, students and parents. With Dipendra Anand Kumar, AI News, Delhi. This is All India Radio bringing you a special program on COVID-19. 
A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Government says focus is on test, cure and to ensure low mortality due to COVID-19. No new case of COVID-19 reported in the last 14 days in 78 districts. Recovery rate of patients improves to 19.89%. 10.6 lakh employees benefited through Employees Provident Fund contribution transferred under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. Record 2.8 lakh metric tons of food grains moved by Food Corporation of India in a single day to different parts of the country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address Gram Panchayats across the country via video conference on occasion of National Panchayati Raj Day tomorrow. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh inaugurates Mobile Virology Research and Diagnostics Laboratory enhancing COVID-19 samples testing. Jammu and Kashmir government announces healthcare package for pregnant women in the wake of coronavirus outbreak. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh today inaugurated a mobile virology research and diagnostics laboratory through video conference to test COVID-19 samples. It has been developed by Defence Research and Development Organisation, DRDO, in association with ESIC Hospital Hyderabad and private industry. Speaking on this occasion, Mr. Singh said, the government has taken several timely decisions because of which the spread of COVID-19 in the country is far less compared to many other countries. He appreciated the setting up of this biosafety level 2 and level 3 lab in a record time of 15 days, which usually takes about 6 months time. He said this testing facility, which can process more than a thousand samples in a day, will enhance countries' capabilities in fighting COVID-19. <laughs> और एक मोबाइल टेस्टिंग लैब तैयार करने में कामयाबी हासिल की मुझे यह बताया गया है कि यह मोबाइल टेस्टिंग लैब प्रतिदिन एक से लेकर 2000 सैंपल्स की यह टेस्टिंग कर सकती है Founder, member of Muslim Personal Law Board and educationist Kamal Farooqi has appealed to the Muslim community to keep praying at home during Ramzan also like they did on Fridays and Shab-e Barat during the lockdown the upcoming Ramzan Mubarak month is a very, very important month in the life of the Muslims. And we are very happy to tell our countrymen, Juma prayers, which is a must. We appealed to Muslims and they did it at home. Then there was a Shabai Parat. We were also very concerned at that particular point of time because huge people go to visit the graveyards. But we made the appeal and Muslims uh, very religiously followed it. Now the third challenge is Ramzan Mubarak. We request all the Muslim brethren and sisters and our children, please observe the instructions of the government. Whenever this kind of the covertized kind of things is going on, please remain at home. Don't go to the mosque. Mr. Farooqi also appealed to the Muslims to give charity and feed all without discrimination of religion. The, as far as the zakat and sadqat, the charities, please do remember all the people of without any caste, creed and differentiation to help them also because they are our brothers. The entire humanity is the brothers and sisters as far as the Islamic philosophy is concerned. And I'm pretty sure they will follow the request of their elders and they will help the government also in keeping the safe distance and taking care of all the instructions of the government. In our series, Experts Speak on All India Radio, we bring you the views of the leading medical experts on COVID-19. Talking to AIR News, Dr. G. Kamal, pulmonologist, said that people should use masks without fail while stepping out. Symptoms are often triggered by exercise, laughter, allergens, cold air, etc. And these symptoms may worsen during any viral infection, so as this COVID-19 infection also. Usually, a written action plan is given to all asthma patients, including children and adults. They should not stop any medications prescribed by their consultants without their advice. And mainly, these inhalers, they should not stop at this time. Sometimes, a short course of oral corticosteroids may be needed for severe asthma exasperation and they should seek medical advice immediately. Dr. S. K. Arora, pediatrician at Max Mart Hospital, Saket, said that special care has to be given towards toddlers and kids in light of COVID-19 and influenza-like symptoms in them has to be reported to doctors. COVID disease, it does happen in toddlers, but the point is most of the time it's not too severe. It's generally milder. 
number one. Number two, if they are worried, they should take care, uh, like they will take for a cold or cough-like illness, give them the pain relief or if they have fever, to give them paracetamol or something to bring down the temperature and talk to the at least if they have good illness. Younger children, at least talk to the doctor who's been taking care of them, who can understand, tell them the symptoms. Then obviously if they develop any difficulty breathing or they get very irritable or they get very high fever, that's the time they need to be seen. The News Services Division of All India Radio in its bilingual live phone-in program today will bring you a special discussion program on COVID-19. Professor Vaitya Kartar Singh Diman, Director General for Central Council for Research in Ayurvedic Sciences, Ministry of Ayush, will participate in the discussion. Listeners can ask questions to the experts on toll-free telephone number 1-800-115767. You can also ask questions on telephone number 011-2331-4444 and post queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts by hashtag Ask AIR. This can be heard tonight on SM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.25 p.m. onwards. This program will also be available on our website newsonair.com and on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You can also follow us on the News on Air app for updates. Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Javrekar has hailed the contribution of frontline COVID-19 warriors such as healthcare workers, police personnel and sanitation workers. Mr. Javrekar today handed out letters of appreciation to them in New Delhi. The letters were signed by the minister and 40 civilians and were handed over to doctors, nurses, bankers, sanitation staff and postal department employees among others. Mr. Javrekar asserted that India will win and novel coronavirus will be defeated. The Inter-Ministerial Central Team, IMCT, has refuted certain media reports claiming that it has projected coronavirus cases in Mumbai to touch 42,604 by 30th April and 6.5 lakh by mid-May. In a statement issued from Mumbai today, the IMCT clarified that no such projection has been made. The committee said the projection seemed to be based on a hypothetical mathematical model calculated at a doubling rate of 3.8 days. It informed that currently the doubling rate in Mumbai has increased to 7.1 days. The central team visiting Mumbai had yesterday asked the state government to augment institutional quarantine facilities in dense slum pockets and also ramp up its contact tracing program in slum areas. Following a meeting with the committee members, Maharashtra Health Minister Rajesh Tope has stated that the state government has increased surveillance, screening, testing and treatment in a bid to arrest the COVID-19 outbreak. In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, Srinagar District Administration has drawn up a health care package for the expecting women in the next four months. It includes a dedicated 24-7 helpline to facilitate end-to-end -end assistance, regular medical checkups, ambulance services, hospital lineups, as well as counseling sessions. The aim of the administration is to ensure that a baby is born healthy and in a safe environment, keeping in view of COVID-19. More from a Srinagar correspondent. Srinagar District Administration has reached out to more than 6,300 expecting women allaying their fears about proper health care during the coronavirus outbreak and the prevailing lockdown. The condition of the women pre and post delivery shall be monitored on a web-based application which will have details like expected date of delivery, administrative action, hospital assistance and the vaccination schedules. After the baby is born, the administration will provide the new mother a baby kit that includes nutrition, supplements, lotion, soaps and sanitizers. Meanwhile, Pulwama District has become the first district in the valley as corona-free. All the three positive patients after undertaking the necessary quarantine have successfully recovered which was possible only by the precautionary measures adopted by the residents and with the joint efforts of the medical staff and the district administration. AI correspondent Pulwama, Mir Nazir has significantly contributed in this endeavor by assisting the administration to make the district corona-free. This is Sunil Kohl for AI News from Shirinagar. In Union Territory of Ladakh, the two COVID-19 patients from Shakhar Chiktan subdivision have been cured and discharged from dedicated COVID-19 hospital Kargil. In Assam, after a gap of one week, another person has been tested positive in Assam. 
Health Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma in a tweet informed that the positive person who hails from Dhubri district has a history of being in touch with another patient who was part of Adgaon Masjid congregation in Guwahati. With this, the total number of positive cases have gone up to 35. In Maharashtra, the laborers who have been stranded for the last 20 days at the shelter at Kudal in Sindhudurg district became homesick and went in depression. A local NGO arranged psychiatric counseling for these laborers. As per suggestions received from counselor, the workers have been trained to make candles and incense sticks. Now these laborers are happy and busy with work. They will also get payment for work they are doing before returning to their homes when lockdown ends. मैं योगेश कुमार रहने वाला दिल्ली से हूं हमारे यहां पर युवा परिवर्तन के कुछ लोग आए जिन्होंने हमें कैंडल बनाना सिखाया अगरबत्ती बनाना सिखाया इससे हमें बहुत अच्छा फील हुआ और हमारा टाइम भी इजीली कटा हम अब अच्छा महसूस कर रहे हैं ऐसा सीख के हमें भविष्य में कुछ बिजनेस कर सकते हैं किसी पे डिपेंड नहीं रहेंगे और अपने लिए भी कुछ रोजगार कर सकते हैं the government has asked all district magistrates and chief medical officers to resume the emergency services and also start telemedicine service. Our correspondent reports that after a review meeting in Lucknow, Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath decided to fight the war against COVID-19 in a more aggressive manner. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has ordered to depute senior administrative officials along with senior medical officers to the districts where COVID-19 cases are 20 or more. These senior officers will camp at these districts for at least one week and supervise the works going on in these districts including the health-related projects. An Inspector General level officer of police will be deputed in such districts also to implement the lockdown strictly and effectively. They will also send their reports regularly to the government. The administrative and police officers who are posted in the affected areas have been ordered to increase patrolling in the densely populated areas. The health department has also been asked to publicize the numbers of those doctors who are available for the patient on phone. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. In Tamil Nadu, the state government has permitted certain works to be carried out during the lockdown period. More from a correspondent. The Tamil Nadu government has permitted resuming certain works by relaxing the lockdown conditions. They include the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Scheme work in areas other than containment zones. Construction works have been permitted in rural areas like irrigation, medical institutions, roads, dams, brick fillings, hardware material supply and electricity related projects. State and central government offices for the maintenance of essential services have also been permitted with the rider that the attending staff strength should be one third of the total strength and that they all should wear masks and keep social distancing. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Edapadi Palaniswami has consulted prominent industrial houses in the state about the norms to be followed in industries after the restrictions are lifted in phases. Jay Singh, AR News, Chennai. In Manipur, state government has increased vigil and fencing of border along some part of Indo-Myanmar border after a border village of Myanmar neighbor to Manipur became COVID-19 hotspot. Talking to AIR News, Superintendent of Police, Churchantrapur District Amrita Sinha said, state police along with paramilitary forces has increased border patrolling and awareness meeting with the villagers has been conducted to educate them on COVID-19 management. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said the strategic partnership between India and Singapore can contribute to stability and prosperity in the post-COVID world. Mr. Modi made these remarks while speaking with Singapore Prime Minister Lee Siang Lung today. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said he exchanged views on the COVID-19 pandemic with the Singapore Prime Minister and thanked him for the support and care being extended to Indian citizens in Singapore. And now, before we end the headlines once again. Government says focus is on test, cure and to ensure low mortality due to COVID-19. No new case of COVID-19 reported in the last 14 days in 78 districts. Recovery rate of patients improves to 19.89%. 10.6 lakh employees benefited through Employees Provident Fund contribution transferred under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. Record 2.8 lakh metric tons of food grains moved by Food Corporation of India in a single day to different parts of the country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address Gram Panchayats across the country via video conference on the occasion of National Panchayati Raj Day tomorrow. 
Defence Minister Rajnath Singh inaugurates Mobile Virology Research and Diagnostics Laboratory enhancing COVID-19 sample testing. And with that, we end the special news program on COVID-19.